I'll start by saying sort of what happens with Risk Zero. What is the what is Risk the Risk Zero ZKVM at all, and a bit about how it's architected. So, what is the Risk Zero ZKVM? Well, as Brian mentioned a little, it's a virtual machine. Um, it's a verifiable zero knowledge virtual machine. <clears throat> so, by virtue of being a virtual machine, um, it runs code uh any if you have code that would execute on a physical risk 5 circuit of the same architecture same specific risk 5 architecture as our virtual machine running it on the risk 0 virtual machine is going to work in the same way um we have some extensions added to it to interact with the host to commit data to the receipt and I'll be talking about that stuff later um, but fundamentally, it acts just like an actual physical circuit would. It runs that code. Um, it's verifiable in zero knowledge, which means it's not just that it runs the code. It's not a bare virtual machine. When you run the code, it come it produces, it comes with a receipt saying, hey, this code that I just ran, I ran it, and there's cryptographic data that proves that I ran that exact code. And it's zero knowledge in the sense that anything that isn't the code and that it doesn't explicitly publish is private data. And there's and handing someone the receipt proving the execution tells them nothing about that private data. That's that's what zero knowledge means in this context. Um, so it's a verifiable zero knowledge virtual machine. That's what we have. That's what we're working with. Um, Rust compiles to it so you can prove to people that you have, even if they don't trust you, you can prove, no, this REST code, I really have run it, and this really was the output I got from running it. And they can know that it was not manipulated by you in some way. So what does the architecture look like? Well, in some sense, you have a standard virtual machine architecture where there's a host and a guest, and the host emulates the guest, the guest executes whatever it's being asked to execute. Because we're in the zero knowledge context, the host can send the guest private data. Actually, in general, there's private communication allowed. But in the straightforward examples, the host sends the guest private data. Um, and that data does not show up in the receipt. Nothing is proven about it. But what is proven is which code was executed on the data and the results of executing that code. And that gives you something called a receipt. The receipt comes back to the host. So that's the proof that the computation was done the way it was intended to. And the host is then able to send that receipt off to verifiers. It can forward the receipt to skeptics. Whoever, whoever the host thinks, oh, this person should know what I computed, and I want to convince them I computed it faithfully. Um, and so that goes off to the verifier, who I will talk about now. So on the verifier end, really, we're sort of thinking about what's the architecture of the receipt on the verifier end. All the verifier is going to do is look, inspect the receipt and be like, ah, yes, I see the outputs, and this is a good proof. It really was, this code really was executed correctly. So the receipt has two components, the journal and the seal. The journal is what contains the outputs of the program, and these are public outputs. If you write it to the journal, anyone can see it. So this is the part, sort of the results that you are proving. The seal side is the cryptographic information you need to, uh, the verifier needs to know that the proof was faithfully executed. It contains a bunch of cryptographic data. It also includes a hash of the program um, saying that this is the program that was proven. The the prover didn't sneak in some other second program and say, hey, I'm proving the execution of this, and actually they're proving some other program. That's not possible because the seal contains this hash of the journal. Um, I put the hash in scare quotes because technically it's like a collection of hashes, but essentially it's a hash. Um, you can think of it as a hash, and you'll very much have the right idea. And that's, that's what happens 